In this video, we're going to look at using a few new tools, something we haven't looked at before, which is the symmetry tool. And we're going to build this simple mask. And you can see almost immediately how this is going to be a good introduction to building a human head. Now, to do this, we're going to start off in our front view. And we're going to take the polygon tool. Now, you have a couple of options here. In the attributes manager, you can change the orientation to plus Z, which is what I'm going to use to create just one polygon. And you can also make this a triangle if you prefer. Now for this example, we're going to use a normal quad, a four sided polygon. I'm going to hit C key to make this editable. I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm going to start just by clicking on that one edge and I'm going to control click and drag just to make an extrusion along the side there. Same again across the top. And all I'm doing is holding down control and just building myself a very rough eye shape. Now when I get to this point, I'm going to select this bottom edge, do the same again, hold down control, click and drag. Now here, I'm just going to make one short extrusion and then do another bigger one just afterwards. Move on to this edge and I'm gonna do something similar just to move back around to match up at the other side. Now, I'll do the same there. I'll just do one extrusion across, roughly matched up. Now, here, we don't want to extrude onto this edge. We're actually gonna use the bridge tool here. So I'm just gonna deselect everything. I'm going to choose bridge, and the bridge tool works in point or edge mode. I'm gonna select that edge, and then when I drag up without letting go, you can see it's creating this polygon in the middle for us here. Now, if we go into our perspective view, you can see a bit more clearly what that did. Uh, and this tool does work in the perspective view. So I'm just going to undo that move so you can see again, and it automatically finds and snaps to edges that you might want to use. So let's just show you how that works in point mode as well. So if you wanted to draw out a polygon in a particular way, you could start like so and just adding the clicks as you go, or you can make a full quad by dragging across like so. So I'm gonna use that one. That's my second point. And there's my third point, with the fourth one being that original. Now, in this particular instance, using the edge mode is the quickest and easiest way. Okay, so we've got this very basic front-on view of an eye. But what we need to do is just kind of shape this a little bit more. And we need to shape it in all viewpoints. So I'm going to go into polygon mode, and I'm going to take these two front polygons here. And I'm just going to move them forward just a little, like so, just to give ourselves a little bit of kind of shape and form. I'm going to take the two edges that take this, that make this side here. It's actually three edges because we've got the small extrusion in the middle there. Just zoom out a bit and I'm going to drag them back. I'm also going to just hold down control and using the green axis handle there, which will be our ground plane axis, so that's our X and Z. Just make a few new edges and just pull this back to about so. I'm actually going to hit U, Y, and then U, Y again, and hit T for the scale tool, just to reduce the scale there. I'm gonna hit UK just to reduce the selection. In fact, I'm just gonna do it with the live select tool. And just select those back three edges there into T, reduce the size of them. Now I want the top edge of my mask's wraparound part, this kind of the strap, to be fairly flat. So I'm just gonna hit T for the move tool and in my side view, just line them up roughly there. Don't have to be perfect. But that's just to give me a start of kind of where that's gonna wrap around. And you can see that's happening there quite nicely. Okay, so next we need to give some definition to this area here. So this is going to be what would go over the center of the brow and the nose. So I'm just going to do a little extrusion again there. And this is using the control click and drag method. I'm just selecting everything here and moving it all just a bit. So it's you can see the, the green line in the viewport there is our Y axis. I want everything to be very slightly to the side of that to the right hand side so that it doesn't mess up our symmetry. Okay, so 
Let's drop that selection and see what we need to do now. I need to take the polygons that make up the front of the nose. Make sure you're not in move mode like I am. Make sure you're in live selection mode and just bring those forward like so. Maybe that central one could go backwards. Just control click on it, anything you don't want selected, just to drop that from the selection, like so. Now I'm going to raise that polygon up a little. And we'll keep on refining afterwards, but for now, I'm going to go into point mode and I'm just going to give ourselves a bit more room to maneuver and I'm going to adjust some of these points to create the kind of eye shape that I want for this particular mask. Now I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm going to take the edges that make the inside of the eye socket here and I'm just going to extrude those out. So I'm going to do this again using the control click and drag move but this time I'm going to do it with the scale tool selected. So hit the T key, hold down control, click and drag. And you can see there we have an extra edge loop. And the reason for doing this in scale mode is that we actually get just a bit of tightening in here. And it just helps us kind of form that shape of the inside of the eye just a little bit more. So you could even draw that in just touch more if you wanted to, depending on the, the kind of shape and definition that you want. Okay, so we've got this kind of part of the model built, and what we're going to need to do is just smooth it out as well as making the other half. So I'm going to drop this polygon shape here by holding down Alt into our hypernerbs, and you can see that's actually not looking too bad at all. Uh, it could do with a little bit more work on the nose. So let's take this edge bring this down. I'm going to turn off the hypernerves for a minute. I'm going to grab that point and I'm going to bring it down. Just maneuver around until it's in a position I like. That's probably actually not too bad. And what I need to do now is I'm going to make the symmetry before this gets smooth. We're going to wrap this all the way around and to do this I'm going to take the three edges that make up this central line. I'm gonna make them all in the X direction. I'm gonna make them all in exactly the same place. If we turn on snapping, that might be a bit easier. Snap to the central line like so, rather than trying to line up by eye. Okay, so that's all looking good. Now what we need to do is up here under the array object, if you click and hold, you can see that we have the symmetry Let's drag the polygon object under the symmetry and you should find that we now have a complete mask here. And at this point you can usually see if you've made any glaring errors in setting up. You can see that the eyes are possibly a bit wide out. So I'm just going to use a rectangle select without selecting visible objects and just grab everything and move that in just a bit like so. I'm going to go back to my live selection and I'm going to grab the front polygons here from the nose and the start of this brow. I'm going to move them forward. Now, if these polygons here aren't facing exactly down the Z axis and you start moving things around, then you can break the symmetry. So make sure you use the world axis so they move exactly down or back along the Z axis so you don't break it just something worth remembering. I'm going to go back into point mode in my selection mode and just start now smoothing things out a little bit like so. Actually the rest of the, the model looks pretty smooth as it is. So what we can do is we can put the symmetry object under the hypernerbs and you can leave the symmetry uneditable so it's still kind of a non-destructive method of working and it will still work when we turn the hypernerbs on. So you can see here what we've got going on. And I think this point in the eye probably needs to come across just a touch. So let's grab those points, move them in because the nose was too kind of wide at one point but not the other. 
So we just flare the nose out towards the bottom and bring these points in at the top. We could even extrude out some of these edges if we wanted to. Let's take that one and that one. You can either bring them down or we could extrude them out. I think for this particular example, just bringing them down is probably best. Maybe a bit more. And I think that point there could do with going up. Because this is a mask rather than a face after all. Okay, so that's looking pretty neat. Now what we can do is, with the hypernerves turned back on again, we can see if there are any points that we're not too keen on. This is actually all looking quite nice, but we do need to wrap around again just to make sure our strap meets up at the back. So take the three edges at the back there. I'm going to do this in top view. Just hold down control and I'm just going to very quickly drag them around. to about so and then once more almost to the middle and then let's just go into the front view and make sure these snap to the middle so turn on snapping and these should now you can just see as I move towards that center line you can see at the moment the curve of the hypernerves which is these edges here and when they actually snap to the center, that disappears and the hypernerves joins up, which is one of the benefits of hypernerves and symmetry objects, uh, which is actually quite useful. Okay, so we've got this model now, which is quite a nice looking mask. And um, we've got the eye shapes, which we can easily refine using this low polygon cage. So I can very easily go in here. And if I want to completely change the appearance of this, this mask or this face, I can go in to turn off snapping and I can change them all very easily like so and I now have a very different looking face I could take these two bring them in take those two do the same again it's very easy to adapt okay so we've got this done now the basic forms are all there everything's looking quite nice and sharp what I'm going to do is take the symmetry in the polygon object hit C to make that editable it's going to remove that polygon and add it straight under the hypernerves. We can delete the null, we don't need that anymore, that's just a placeholder. Uh, so if we select this polygon, the actual polygon object, I'm just going to turn off snapping, go into polygon mode, hit select all, so that's command A, and I'm going to hit D and just extrude. Ah, now you can see there's a problem here. We've got dots instead of lines, and we want lines showing in the center of every polygon. I'll just undo this so you can see it more clearly. You can see there's a white line, and that shows the surface direction, the normal direction of each polygon. And they're facing inwards, which I don't really want. So just gonna right click with all of them selected, click reverse normals, and now we can see that that's facing the right direction. So when I hit D and do this extrusion, it will give us depth in the right way, give us some thickness without any oddities. Okay, so I'm just going to give that a bit of thickness in spacebar to drop the tool. Let's drop everything and just back out just a little bit. Okay, so now we can see that we've got this nice smooth shape, although there is a bit of oddness going on. If we select the hypernerves, we can see that the top is a bit sharper than we really want it. So I'm going to take this polygon. Now I could add a knife cut all the way around, and I'll just show you what I mean. I could add an edge loop. So in polygon mode, with the polygon selected, hit UL. I could select all the way around the top, like so. And that shows you kind of the, the loop forms that you have at the moment. Now what I would do is I would actually just create, I would take the knife tool and in loop mode, you could, you could tighten this mesh up just by adding a cut across there and you can see if I do one at the back as well you can see this is now much sharper if we go to another edge it doesn't look as good and this is looking much nicer but it has added a lot of geometry which we don't necessarily want so what you can do is you can go into edge mode 
UL. Let's select all of those edges. And what we're looking to do is give a weight to the selected edge. So what we do is we go to mesh, and I think it's under commands. Uh, we are looking for set hyperurbs weight, which I think is actually under transform tools. Here we go. So weight hyperurbs, and what we're doing is clicking and dragging to the right, and this is setting the weight of those edges in the hyperurbs. Now that's at 100%, which is possibly a bit too much. So let's go to there, drop the tool. And we can already see that front edge is looking a bit better. Let's do the back edge as well. So let's select that loop. And if we go back to our mesh transform tools, hypernerves weight, make sure we can see what we're doing and just drag that out, not all the way. And there we go. Now, the benefit of this is that we have complete control over which edges we're doing what with without having to actually add any geometry, make any cuts or adjust the underlying forms themselves. And we have an edge weight tag here, which you can see, which is easy to adjust and go into. And you can, if you don't like the edge weighting, you can just delete them. We can do the same with the bottom here. So if we drop that tag, go back in, we can also do the same with the bottom edge here. So UL, let's grab that loop there. Mesh, transform tools, weight. Not completely weighted. And same on the back, like so. Mesh, transform tools, weight hyperurbs. Give that a bit of thickness there, a bit of definition, like so. But where the mask might be tighter around the eye, we can leave it looking a bit sharper, but we still have the definition everywhere else. And that's really as simple as it is. And now we've got ourselves a nice looking superhero mask. And if I go back to the finder window so you can see the original one that I made there, you can see that's actually, even though this video took longer because I'm explaining what I'm doing, it's a very quick process and very easy to put together, something which is quite a nice looking model.